Welcome to the Travel Transformation Podcast, the podcast that explores the life-changing potential of solo travel, intentional travel, and location-independent working. Whether you're an aspiring digital nomad or simply want to boost your confidence through epic travel experiences, I'm here to motivate and inspire you to go after all your wildest dreams. I'm Jessica Grace Coleman, author, travel transformation coach, founder of Flip the Script Travel Transformation Services, and your host for the Travel Transformation Podcast. Travel changed my life. Now let's change yours. You ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Travel Transformation Podcast, where we talk all things travel and all things transformation. I'm Jessica Grace Coleman, and I'm your host. And today is just going to be a very quick podcast episode because I wanted to talk about a trip I went on recently to London. So I recently attended the World Travel Market event in London, which was held at the London Excel Conference Centre. And it was my first time going I hadn't really heard about this until a few months ago when I really started getting into the travel industry and I started searching for events that I could go to. And I saw this one. It seemed to be a really good one. People from all over the world go to it every year and it happens to be in London and I happen to be in the UK. So I thought it would be a great idea to go. It's mainly for travel professionals. So you have to apply. It's free to go to, which I think is great. They obviously make their money by the the people who pay to have booths and stuff there. But you have to be a travel professional to go. So this was kind of a a test, I guess, because I'd only just started my Flip the Script Travel Transformation Services business. And you had to put in all the information about your business, the name of it, employees, if you have any website, social media, all that stuff. And then they sort of verify it and send you your information, send you like a badge that you need to print out to take with you if they accept you. And this is a big mindset thing for me, all this kind of stuff. I sort of see it as a sort of challenge because in the past, if I didn't really believe in myself enough, which happens happens a lot, used to happen a lot more, then I probably would have stopped myself from even applying for something like this because I would talk myself out of it. I'd be like, well, I'm not really in the travel industry yet. I'm kind of pivoting into it and I'm not like a big company. I'm not a travel agent. I'm not a tour guide. I'm not all these kind of things. And I would put, sort of put myself down a bit, I guess. And I, I wouldn't even apply for it. So I thought, you know, it's a free event. I'll give it a go. Loads of different people from all over the world, different backgrounds, different businesses are going. So what have I got to lose? So I signed up um, they sent me my stuff and I booked accommodation in London. Now, because it's a huge event and because people from all over the world are coming, obviously, and because it's London anyway, all the hotels in the area were really expensive, at least expensive to me. I'm happy to pay to stay in a nice place, but I would rather spend money on activities and doing things and, you know, flights and things to get to places rather than really expensive accommodation. I'd rather spend it on other stuff. So I was looking at these hotels and, you know, they were like £300 a night minimum if you wanted to be anywhere near the Excel Center and I wanted to be close by, I didn't really want to be getting the tube back and forward all the time. And I wanted to be able to get there and get back and go back to my room if I needed to. So I stopped looking at the hotels that they recommended on the site because I wasn't going to pay that much (laughs) per night, especially considering I probably wasn't going to be that much. And I looked on trusty Airbnb. Now, I'm a big fan of Airbnb, and I know some people have had bad experiences with it, and I hadn't really. All the places I've stayed before have been great. The hosts have been really great, really nice, really helpful, and I've never really had a problem. And I didn't have a problem this time because I knew what I was signing up for. I found a place. It was a room in some lady's house, and it was literally a few minutes walk from the Excel Center and also from the DLR station, Prince Regent Station and Custom House. And it was a perfect location. And more importantly, it was £50 a night, which for that area of London, when this event was on, I thought was brilliant. And there was loads of really good reviews from businessmen and women who had stayed there to go to events at the Excel saying that it was great location and that the host was wonderful. And I thought, yes, quick, book it. So I did. And it was true. The woman was really nice, really helpful. Got our wires crossed a little bit at the end. Um, She thought I was leaving at 6am and I meant 6pm. And she was banging on the door really early because she was worried I was going to miss my flight or something. Bless her. And the area was fine. The house is fine. I just got what I expected to get for £50. 
for a night. And there was another guest staying there in a different room, although I never saw him, I just heard him. And it was under a flight path and I didn't get much sleep. And the room was a bit dark and dingy and it was meh. <laughs> but what are you going to say for £50 a night in London? So I was glad that I had the room, but it also made me realise something. And if I'm on my own, I will try and spend the least amount of money as possible. Because like I say, if it's a hotel room, you're not necessarily going to be there the whole time. Um, if I'm going away with friends and we're you know, staying in a nice Airbnb and we're going to be spending a lot of time in the place, then yes, I might splash out a bit, especially if there's more of you to share the cost with. That works out really well. But on my own, I'd rather save money. That was until I stayed in this room. And again, nothing against the lady. She was absolutely lovely. But I was sort of sitting in this room, like a really dingy light bulb, sort of smelt a bit musty. Um, it actually reminded me of a hotel I stayed in in Manchester once uh, with my friends when we went to a um, zombie run, <laughs> like a, a zombie uh, event outside. And we all dressed up as Shaun of the Dead. But anyway, um, we stayed in a cheap hotel there, again, just for the location, really. And we were looking at the reviews. I can't remember what site it was on, booking.com or something. And some woman had said the hotel is very cheap, very shabby. And she said something that stuck in my mind because that neither me nor my friends knew what the hell she was talking about. But she said it was full of foist and crambles. And <laughs> we don't know if she meant crumbs or if she meant a sort of mus musty, musty smell. That's what foist reminds me of. But so, well, actually, it sounds more like moist, but I don't know. But it's what I've used ever since to, if I've stayed somewhere that hasn't been <laughs> particularly super modern and clean and all that stuff. Like I say, it's it's full of foist and crambles. It sort of smells a bit foisty and there, there could be piles of crambles, whatever they are, in the corner. And sitting there in this room, I thought, if ever there was a place that was full of foist and crambles... <laughs> It is this room. <laughs> um, and it made me think, it made me rethink a little bit. I'm going to another business event in London in March. And one of my mentors, one of the people I really look up to, the author and money mindset mentor, Denise Duffield Thomas, is going. And if you are one of the first 50 people to get tickets through her link, then you, you get to go to this breakfast with Denise Duffield Thomas. And I assume you get to meet her. So I'm really happy that I'm going to that. And I was like, I'm not, I really don't want to stay in a foist and cramble <laughs> bedroom in someone's house. Because it just, it just made the whole thing not very nice. Like I didn't really want to touch anything because I, I felt kind of unclean. And maybe this is me. Maybe I have stupid standards. I don't know. I'm quite happy in somewhere like a travel lodge or a premier inn. They're modern, they're clean, they're light usually, you know, absolutely everything you need. It's fine. And I would much rather spend a little bit more money to stay somewhere like that than get the cheapest possible place and just feel like a bit ugh, <laughs> staying there. So I have booked a premiere in when I go to London, when I go to Wembley in March. And I'm so happy that I have. And again, this is not a diss on Airbnb. I love Airbnb. I use it for most of my accommodation, I would say, if I'm not using co-livings and things like that. But yeah, it was kind of an epiphany. I was just like, I would much rather spend more money to stay somewhere that isn't full of foist and crambles. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, that's not to do with the uh, event at all. And also not to do with the event was uh, the fact that this is the first time I've been to London since the pandemic, since before the pandemic. I actually can't remember how many years it's been, maybe three or something. And it's the first time I've been since the Elizabeth line opened, the new purple tube line. Purple is my favourite colour, so I got stupidly excited about this. <laughs> anyway... But oh my gosh, it's so nice. The tube is so handy, obviously, when you're in London. And I'm very grateful for it. But uh, just the really, really old stations that are super, you know, hot and claustrophobic. And the trains are all rickety and they're not particularly clean. or they don't seem clean because they're so old. And all that stuff. I, I always sort of dread going on the tube a little bit, especially if it's sort of winter and you're all bundled up in lots of layers and then you go in and you're boiling and you've got a suitcase with you and it's just oh it's still too much <laughs> but the elizabeth line was like a dream <laughs> the station is a much more open it's not like a tiny tunnel it's huge ceilings everything's obviously new clean shiny uh they have the the sort of 
perspex stands as you're waiting for the train so you don't get blown off the platform every time a train comes along and it was just a really really nice experience and I I did a few things while I was in London I went to Leicester Square and Covent Garden for a bit and I went to Westfield uh, shopping centre to do some shopping and every time I, I got to get the Elizabeth line I was like yes anyway if you haven't been to London recently go on the Elizabeth line I really enjoyed it I don't know if that's lame but anyway and it was a nice, it was a nice, uh, a nice way to get away from my foisty, crambly room. <laughs> it was a nice change to go on something new and nice and shiny. Anyway, so the event itself, I said this was going to be a quick episode and it's, <laughs> as usual, I'm rambling on, so sorry about that. Monday morning, I left my room, my foisty, crumbly room, and walked to the Excel Centre a few minutes, got in, it was all very well organised and everything like that. I got my lanyard and my little case to put my badge in. It had my name and flipped the script travel transformation services and a little QR code that people could zap if they wanted to go to your website and that kind of thing. I had my business cards on me. I had some flyers for my podcast and I went in and first impressions, it was really cool. There were countries from all over the world that had their own stands, their own booths, but they weren't just booths. They were like huge constructions. Like Egypt had this massive kind of Egyptian monolithic (laughs) building with fake hieroglyphs all up it and a little sort of throne on one side, little chair you could sit in. There were people doing cooking demonstrations, giving out alcohol from their country. There were people dancing. There were people playing instruments as you walked around. Obviously a lot of businessmen and women, women walking around, lots of places to eat and drink. And It was just a really cool atmosphere. There were lots of people dressed up in their traditional clothes. And it just, it made me, if I wasn't already into travel, (laughs) it would have made me want to go traveling right then and there. Write Your Year, 365 Ways to Change Your Year and Your Life by me, Jessica Grace Coleman, is out now. A book with awesome new prompts for every single day of the year that are all designed to help you improve your life, revamp your mindset, and have a whole lot of fun in the process. These prompts are a mix of writing exercises, small and big challenges, mindset tools and techniques, fun things to do with friends and family, ideas for paying it forward and helping others, goal-setting tasks, and more. Challenge yourself to complete one prompt a day, or pick up the book every so often to get a quick burst of inspiration, encouragement, and motivation. This book will help you change your life one day at a time. Are you ready for the challenge? Buy it now from Amazon or head to traveltransformationcoach.com forward slash books. And now let's get back to the Travel Transformation Podcast. Now, a lot of people who go there are travel agents or tour guides, and they're there to network and have meetings and you know, make business deals with hotels and tourist boards and that kind of thing. I am not at that level yet. In the future, I would like to run retreats and things, in which case the world travel market will be a really good place for me to go in the future. So maybe next year, I will go in with that plan in mind and set up some meetings and that kind of thing. But for me, because it was my first one, because I'm still starting out, I wanted to just go there, scope it out, see what was going on, and just get some ideas and inspiration, really. And also, I went in with the intention because this is all about intentional travel and intentional activities and intentional uh, visits to places. I went in with the intention of getting as much content as I could for social media. So I took lots of pictures. I took lots of videos. I wasn't the only one. There were quite a few travel influencers walking around talking to themselves (laughs) on their phones and stuff like that. So that was my intention to go in there, check it out, see what was going on come up with ideas for what I could do in the future if I went back there, see what everyone else was doing and gather content that I could use on my social media and my website and on my podcast like I'm doing now. And so that was my intention really. It wasn't to have meetings. It wasn't to do a lot of networking, although some networking would be good. And actually, as as I find with most things in life, the most networking got done at the bar. <laughs> So yeah, I met quite a few people uh, when I was waiting in line, in the long line for the bar and exchanged business cards and following on Instagram and that kind of thing. So 
even if you go, you don't have any meetings planned, you don't have any specific reason to network with people like with me, I haven't started the whole retreat thing yet. So I, I didn't have that to talk about with people. You can still obviously network with people, get to know people, exchange information. And it's just a really great way to meet people in your industry, no matter what industry you're in. I'm sure there are similar conferences in places like London and I'm sure New York, LA, all the big cities really, it's worth traveling to, I would say. I sent some uh, pictures and videos to my friends while I was there. Um, my friend Vicky, who I met in Colorado, and we both went to the University of Colorado in Boulder. I was sort of explaining what it was and showing pictures and stuff. And she said it reminded her of, um, we did an international festival while we were there when we all had booths. And me, my friend Vicky, Katie, and uh, a couple of others, we did an English booth. You had to do a certain dish for each booth uh, related to your country. We did scones or scones, however you say it, because we we didn't have to cook them. Thank God (laughs) the kitchen cooked them and they they could only do certain things. So we had to do scones rather than anything else. Not sure what else we would have done. Maybe fish and chips. Yeah, British cuisine. I don't really think of many things. (laughs) Anyway, we had that and then we had some props. We had a sort of fake wall behind us that we'd done in a kind of old fashioned tacky British pub style. <laughs> and yeah, when I told Vicky about this, she said it sounded like the International Festival on Steroids, which actually is kind of accurate. <laughs> it was exactly like what we did in Colorado University times a hundred, times a thousand. It was amazing. Yeah, definitely would recommend it. Really good for vegan food as well, because they're obviously really into sustainability and saving the planet and going plant-based and that kind of stuff. So they had quite a few sort of vegan sections, which was really cool for me. I'm not vegan, but I'm vegetarian. So that was great. I also got my steps in (laughs) when I was there. So that's all all good. Did a lot of walking around while I was checking out all the stands and taking my content and everything. So that's always a good thing as well. Also, when I was in Westfield Shopping Centre, this is just an aside, I walked past the comedian Rosie Jones. She was doing some shopping. You might have seen her on, well, she's been on loads of stuff, but I, I know her best from The Last Leg and doing presenting work for them. She's a comedian and presenter. Anyway, that was cool. <laughs> Always nice to see a celebrity. And talking of celebrities, they, they had lots of talks and discussions and presentations as well. And I went to see Levison Wood talk on the future stage, although the E had fallen down on the sign for future stage. So it said future stag, which everyone found quite funny. It's the little things. (laughs) And if you don't know who Leveson Wood is, he's a British explorer and author. He used to be in the army. He's a really tough guy. He's done crazy things like walking the entire length of the Nile. I've just read his book, Walking the Himalayas. And he does lots of like endurance walking and exploring a lot in war-torn countries and things like that, really dangerous stuff. And he's, you know, nearly died several times on these expeditions and he keeps doing them. Um, but he he was there, we, he was interviewed, and then people in the crowd got to ask questions. And it was really interesting to hear him talk about all this stuff. And I didn't know this, but he actually used to own a company where they did tours, like he was a tour guide, doing like expeditions in mountains, walking, hiking, that kind of thing. So he he was on the same level of, as a lot of people who were there attending, who were also tour guides and travel agents slash tour guides. And it was just really interesting to know that he could go from that to doing what he does now, which is he goes on expeditions that he sort of comes up with himself. He writes a book about it. He has TV shows about it. He obviously has brand deals, sponsorships, things like that. And he's doing a new one, Walking with Elephants or Walking with the Elephants. I can't remember. He shared a sort of sneak peek of that with us, which looks really cool in Africa. And it was just really inspiring. And it really made me want to go and do something cool. (laughs) Not quite as crazy as walking the length of the Nile, (laughs) but um, just going and seeing these these talks, just really inspiring. And I'm so glad I went to that one. He was sort of walking off at the end and he got cornered by a few people who had been sitting near the front. And he was so nice, bless him. He just stood there and talked to everyone while a massive queue formed behind him. And I'd been sitting near the front, so I managed to get in quite quick. And I met him. I took a selfie. I asked him for his business card because a few other people had been doing that. And it doesn't have his number on or anything, but it has his like email address. And it's the coolest business card I've ever seen. It's just totally black with like a shiny silver uh, lion. Is it a lion or a wolf? Now I can't remember on the front. 
and the details on the back. And it was just really nice. Like a the me of a few years ago might not have, well, I probably would have gone and talked to him because I, I love see, seeing celebrities in the wild and getting pictures with them. But I might not have asked for his business card. And yeah, it just, it shows how much more confident I've become since I've really started traveling intentionally. Uh, which is what my new book is all about, which is coming out soon, Intentional Travel Transformation. I kind of wish I'd been able to finish the book before then, so I could have taken some copies with me, but never mind, there's always next year. I didn't want to rush it just for that that reason. I wanted to take my time with it and do it properly. So anyway, that was mostly what happened. I have made a reel of a lot of videos I've done, and I'm going to be posting more content on my social media. You can find me on Instagram at Travel Transformation Coach. And oh, another thing, I was walking through the sort of middle bit of the conference centre. So there's two massive halls either side of the central walkway where there's lots of bars and restaurants and toilets and everything else. And I was walking from one hall to another and I heard music, so I followed it. And I saw these Indian dancers. They were from the India booth, the India stand. And they were doing this amazing dancing, wearing amazing clothes. The the ladies had amazing colourful skirts that f- like flew out as they were the dancing as they were twirling, which just looked really nice. So I stood there and took some video and watched them just thinking, oh, it's really nice to see this. And it's great content. It looks really fun and b- vibrant and colourful and energetic. And I, I nearly sort of walked away after they'd done a, a couple of dances. And I thought, no, I'll stay till the end. It's really, really cool. And then my worst nightmare happened. <laughs> a couple of ladies sort of joined them from the crowd. And I thought, oh, are they meant to do that? That's a bit weird. They weren't really on a stage. They were just on the, the floor. So anyone could sort of, we were all on the same level. And then another woman joined them. And then one of the dancers walked up to me because I was right at the front and uh, beckoned me onto the dance floor. And I was like, <laughs> no, no, no. Which is usually what I do when someone asks me to dance when I'm not drunk. <laughs> if I'm drunk, I'll be like, yes. But no, very sort of self-conscious of people watching me dancing. And there was a big crowd watching these dancers people from all over the world, most of them with their phones out recording it. And I was like, oh God, no, 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 no. Thank you, but no. But she would not take no for an answer. I think she just, they wanted as many people to join them as possible. And a lot of people were not doing it. And I sort of had my big tote bag with me full of like my program and everything. And I was just like, no, no, no. But then I thought, why the hell not? (laughs) I don't know anyone here. I wasn't there with anyone. I went on my own. And the dancers were really cool and it looked fun. And I just thought, why not? So I went there and I did some terrible dancing. And I <laughs> I posted it on my uh, some of my sort of personal social media. I had a video of them dancing when I was watching. And then I had the video when I was dragged onto the dance floor and my phone was still recording. And it's just, you can see it going up and down when I'm sort of like clapping my hands and it's just chaotic. <laughs> when everyone else joined in and no one knew what was happening. It was quite funny. But again, the me of several years ago would just not have done that. Not in a million years. I would have said no the first time and then just walked away very, very quickly <laughs> to make sure it didn't happen. But again, since traveling and building my confidence and that kind of stuff, you just start thinking, well, why not? Yeah, I might look like an idiot, probably will look like an idiot. But these people don't know me. And even if they get me on camera, who cares? And I know to a lot of people that probably doesn't seem like a big deal you would just go and do it. But as someone who's very introverted and not just introverted, but like shy, quiet, and doesn't like being the center of attention, dancing in public, one of my worst nightmares. <laughs> but I did it. I had a good time. And then the music ended and everyone walked away and I just sort of scuttled away. I did actually see them dancing again later on their stage, the India stage, and they, they were doing some of the kind of dancing and it looked really cool. And then one of the dancers locked eyes with me, the same one from before. And I was like, I'm just going to go now, just in case they do start pulling people on. Because once was fun, but twice, I don't know, needed to uh, work my way up to that a bit. (laughs) So I did quickly skedaddle at that point. But I had a really great time and it, it was just a really nice vibe there. And I can't wait to go again next year. So that's what I wanted to say, really. It's gone on a lot longer than I meant it to. but. If anyone's in the industry, I would highly recommend going. And again, like I say, whatever industry you're in, I would recommend looking to see if there are any events like this. I just Googled it. And then I think I was on the London Excel calendar and I just signed up and that was that. And a lot of these things, trade shows and that kind of stuff are free. So no excuses. And just book your accommodation well in advance so you don't have to stay in a foisty, crambly room. (laughs) 
I do feel kind of bad talking about the foist and crumbles of it all, but it was worth it because it made me realize that next time I'm going to even just spend a little bit more to get a nice new modern foistless crumbleless room to stay in. So we live and we learn. <laughs> and I've had as I say I've had lots of nice Airbnbs where I've had the whole place to myself all my friends and they've been wonderful, but when you're staying in someone else's house, you are staying in someone else's house. <laughs> There are going to be other people around. There's going to be noise. You don't know what state things are going to be in. Someone had a shower at like 3 a.m. and I was right next to the bathroom. So I was like, what is going on? <laughs> but um, yeah, just just wanted to slip that in there because it's, sometimes it's worth spending a little bit more money not to be surrounded by foist and crumbles. Okay, that's it for now. I will see you on the next episode. Thank you for listening. And until next time, I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Travel Transformation Podcast with me, Jessica Grace Coleman. If you enjoyed this episode, please rate and review and spread the word if you have friends or family who also want to transform through travel. For a chance of winning one of my books in ebook form, please review this podcast on Apple Podcasts and send a screenshot to info at traveltransformationcoach.com or at traveltransformationcoach on Instagram. I'll be picking a new winner each month and you can choose between any of my non-fiction titles, including Write Your Life, Write Your Year and Intentional Travel Transformation. You can find out more about me at traveltransformationcoach.com and until next time, I'll catch you on the flip side.